sources tell CNN that President Obama's executive action is expected to be announced ahead of his State of the Union address on January 12th. We don't know the exact language of this order yet, nor do we know the exact day. But here's what we do know. The focus remains on closing the so-called gun show loophole, which doesn't require certain sellers at gun shows, online sites, and elsewhere to have a license and therefore doesn't require them to conduct background checks. Additionally, sources also say his plan will include new funding for government agencies to better reinforce existing gun laws. It's likely that the mass shootings during Obama's presidency did influence this executive action, but the vast majority of guns used in recent mass shootings, some of the more notable ones and highly publicized, San Bernardino, California, Charleston, South Carolina, Newtown, Connecticut, Aurora, Colorado, and Tucson, Arizona, in those cases, all of those weapons were bought legally through a licensed dealer, which included federal background checks. Let's, so let's talk more about this executive order and what it entails, what's behind it. CNN senior political analyst David Gergen uh, with us on the phone and constitutional attorney Paige Pate with me here in Atlanta. So Paige, let me begin with you. Will this executive order um, be challenged on constitutional merits. Oh, absolutely. There's no question that as soon as this order is signed, the Republicans are going to line up to file a lawsuit to challenge it. The first question is, is this type of restriction constitutional? And I think it is. The Supreme Court has given us some guidelines in, in what we can do and not do in relation to guns, mm -hmm. but requiring background checks for everyone, I think the Supreme Court's okay with that. The second question, and this is the bigger question, can he do it by executive action? Mm -hmm. It is very limited, the scope of an executive order. You have to be given the authority by Congress or it has to be clear in the Constitution. That's what the Republicans will focus on. Mm. Does the White House feel it would be defeating if if it were to ask Congress for such approval in order to move forward with executive action, would it not put the White House in the same situation it's been in, not being able to get congressional support? Exactly. I think that's the problem. The White House sees no political will to move forward on gun control in Congress, so he's going to do it on his own. And Congress could later ratify what he's done, but I think this is at least one way to start the conversation and to press it forward. Okay. And uh, David, if I could bring you into this then, I know you're on the phone with us, but in your view, is this a prelude to more? Is this a small step toward other potential action from this uh, White House? This is a prelude to a major showdown at the ballot box, and, this, and I think that's where ultimately gun issues are going to be resolved this November. Uh, I think the courts may speak before November, but I don't think they'll really resolve the issues. But clearly now, President Obama, and as the support of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, if they if they either Sanders or, or especially Hillary is elected, you're going to see them uh, follow through and, and push, con continue pushing the Obama agenda. On the other hand, you're now going to have Republicans like Trump is already out there and there are others who are saying, we're elected, we're going to cancel it. So ultimately, I think this is actually a good thing. It's going to be left to the voters. Let the people of the United States decide this. It's very contentious. People in r rural areas tend to be very opposed to gun control. People who live in large urban areas and live around a lot of violence tend to be very much in favor of it. Let's, let's have a vote. Put mm -hmm. it to a vote. And so, Paige, if this is to go through, if the, if the executive action is what we understand it to be at this point, um, based on some of those examples, some that I just gave at the top of the show, it may not have been a preventive measure in any way in keeping uh, the guns out of someone's hands who had, you know, ill intent. But how do you suppose the White House would argue it is its implementation would be instructive and important? Well, that's a great question. But I think Obama has addressed that by saying, if we can just stop one of these violent incidents with guns, then we have done something important. Even though these guns that were used in connection with these other atrocities, these horrible crimes, uh, were purchased legally, if we can stop perhaps the next one or the one after that, if we can do anything to at least advance uh, what we believe, or at least what the administration believes, is too much gun violence, and I think he believes it's worth it. And then, David, you know, it in terms of the political fight, especially in an election year, uh, this method of going after the sellers as opposed to going after the gun owners and buyers, does that change the dialogue uh, in the ro road for the White House? I, um, I, I, I don't know whether it changes the dialogue. It certainly sharpens the issue as one of the uh, highest in at the, of the campaign, it's so, so wrapped in, as you know, it's a national security as well. So a voter is going to be paying a lot of attention to it. And then the, the election will serve as a referendum. 
But I also want to emphasize, Frederick, that the, the, this emphasis on buyers at this point and, the, and background checks, this is only the beginning. There's, if, once this happens, you're going to see a, an additional push on assault weapons, how powerful these weapons are. It may be that the people who did, you know, did the shootings have bought guns legally, but should they really have these kind of guns in the hands of people like the, who've been shooting? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of Americans would say no. So other Americans would say, hey, don't mess with guns. Yeah, stay out of it. So it's a. I think it's a great mm-hmm. issue for voters to decide. Mm. And and then Paige, how does the White House win support when you look at some of the more recent um, occasions? You talk about the San Bernardino uh, shootings, and these uh, gun people did not obtain their weapons by way of a gun show or even going to a shop, but instead it was handed off to them from an acquaintance, you know, who we now know is is facing charges of his own. How might this provision uh, be uh, asserted in, in that argument or not? Well, I think President Obama is trying to start with what he believes is the easiest baby step first. He believes that most Americans support the idea that if you're a prohibited person already, if you have a criminal conviction, if you're convicted of domestic violence, you should not have a gun. So all this additional background check um, executive order will do will be to try to prevent those people from getting guns. And I think that motive, or at least that initiative, does have plenty of political support. All right, Paige Pate, uh, David Gergen, thanks so much to both of you. Appreciate it. Thank you both. And of course, we're going to talk more about that over the 